Hello everyone, welcome to the daily editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today, 19th November 2024. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss. The first article, A River Lament. This article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. This article is talking about the challenges faced by the Indian rivers. We will be discussing what will be the causes, what are the steps taken by the Indian government for the conservation of the river bodies in India. And the next article, Manipur has a case for imposing article 356. This newspaper article is taken from the newspaper, The Hindu. This newspaper article is talking about the uh, talking about the importance of article 356 and in the context of the ongoing resurgence of violence in the Manipur. So, in this topic, we will be discussing what is article 356 and how it is changing the center state relations and what will be the consequences once the article 356 is imposed in a state. So, without much delay, let us get into our editorial discussion. Before getting into our newspaper discussion, we have an important announcement from Shankar IAS Academy. Pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025, batch 3rd will be starting on 21st November 2024. We know that every year the prelims are getting tougher. So, practicing more questions is the only solution for overcoming uh, difficulty. Therefore, do register for the program and take the test. The link for the registration will be given in the description. We also have one more announcement. This is regarding the Chakra initiative of Shankar IAS Academy. Chakra is exclusively focusing on current affairs. We know the importance of current affairs in both prelims as well as mains. More details about this program will be given as a brochure in the description. Go through this and register for the program. Look at this newspaper article taken from the newspaper, the Indian Express, a rivers lament. This newspaper article is talking about the sacredness and the life-giving role of Indian rivers, its spiritual importance, its cultural importance, at the same time, the plight of Indian rivers due to inadequate policy, policy making and pollution. So, let us discuss more about this article from the UPSC mains point of view. To understand a river, we are taking an example. Here, the example is Yamuna. It, Yamuna is often considered as a sacred river in India. And coming to the basic facts related to Yamuna, the origin of the Yamuna is from Yamunotri Glacier, which is located in Uttarakashi district of Uttaragand. And the origin is at the altitude of 6,338. The altitude of origin of Yamuna River is around 6 kilometers. And coming to the length of this river, it is approximately 1,376 kilometers. It is the longest tributary of River Ganga. And uh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh are the states through which the river Yamuna passes through. And another important uh, factor related to Yamuna is the, it joins river Ganga at a place called Prayagraj and the confluence of river Ganga and Yamuna is known as Triveni Sangama. And the key cities covered by this river are Delhi, Madura, Agra and Etwa. Coming to the tributaries of Yamuna, it is very important, especially from the UPSC prelims point of view. The right bank tributaries and left bank tributaries. The right bank tributaries are Chambal, Sindh, Betwa and Ken, while the left bank tributaries are Hindon, Sharda and Giri. So, this is a map of the, uh, the physical map of river Ganga. So, please notice this. The questions can be expected. And coming to the major causes for the river pollution in India, the first major cause is the industrial waste. That means the untreated dispersal of industrial waste into the nearby water bodies can result in the uh, depletion of that water body. For example, the uh, release of chromium from the tanneries near the river Ganga. And the second major reason is the domestic sewage. Because we know that the northern plains is witnessing a rapid urbanization. It is a densely populated region in India. And therefore, the day by day, the urban waste is increasing and as per the estimation, nearly 80% of the water discharged into river Ganga are untreated. And the next major reason is the agriculture runoff. That means the, the chemical fertilizers and pesticides used in the agriculture field will be slowly leached into the nearby water bodies, which will result into a phenomena called eutrophication. Eutrophication means excess nutrition. So, once this excess nutrition enters into the water, it will uh, promote the growth of algae. So, the rapid growth of algae will reduce the penetration of sunlight into the into the water body therefore uh, the the oxygen present beneath the water will be uh, utilized by the micro by the living organism living under the water and therefore there will be a significant reduction or there will be a huge demand for biological oxygen and once this oxygen uh, uh, gets exhausted this will result into death of aquatic animals living beneath the water so, this will be the net result of eutrophication. And the major reason of the eutrophication is the agriculture runoff and industrial disposal. And the next major reason is the religious activities done on the bank of uh, River Ganga as well as River Yamuna. So, this religious activities will result into dumping of many non-biodegradable -bio items as well as, we you know, the, the items which are used for 
ceremonial purpose will also be dumped into the water bodies this can also result in pollution and then the next major reason is the plastic and solid waste and this plastic we know the major feature of this plastic it, it is the it is a non biodegradable product we know that therefore this plastic and the solid waste will clog the water bodies especially the roots in the water bodies can this can significantly affect the habitat of gangetic dolphins at the same time garials found in the river banks and then we have the sand mining and deforestation this can disrupt the course of a river at the same time this can also leads to increased soil erosion and now we are going to see the major challenge in river conservation in india the first major challenge is the weak enforcement that is ineffective implementation of penalties and punishments for example in india we have water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 which penalizes the activities that pollutes the water but still it is ineffectively implemented so once we can implement it in more stronger then it will deter the violators and then the interstate water dispute the best example we have is the kaveri water dispute this can also affect the conservation efforts by the states now we are going to see certain initiatives taken by the government of india to conserve the uh, major rivers in india the first major is the namami ganga program so the objective is the holistic objective is the holistic regeneration of river ganga and its tributaries through promoting sewage treatment plants river front development and through public partnership so the recent estimations or studies found that there is a there is an improvement in the water quality in river ganga and then we have the national river conservation plan this program covers 38 rivers across 190 towns and it is majorly focusing on pollution reduction as well as the promotion of sewage treatment plants and then we have the pollution control measures for example under the water act the central government established the central pollution control board so this central pollution control board is responsible for assessing three major pollutions first one is the air quality second one is the water pollution and third one is the noise pollution so uh, they will be releasing air quality index water quality index and its impact on human health for example recently the central pollution control board uh, brought released the air quality index of delhi which is saying that the the delhi air quality score is is above 400 right so therefore the, the delhi government is currently going for the implementation of grab phase 4 and then we have the jal jeevan mission it was launched in august 2019 the objective of the uh, jal jeevan mission is to provide potable water to every household in india by 2024 but due to several reasons this program is yet to be completed and then we have the wetland conservation and management rules 2017 it is related to the protection of west wetlands linked to river systems for ecological balance because we know that wetland is also important for you know it act as a carbon sequestration area therefore wetlands are very important both in river conservation as well as in balancing the ecosystem then we have the promotion of sustainable agriculture that includes promoting organic farming and integrated pest management we know that the the use of fertilizers and the the pesticides are one of the major reasons for the eutrophication of water bodies therefore when we adopt the organic farming we can reduce the agriculture runoff thereby we can also reduce the eutrophication we can save the water bodies and then we have the jal shakti ministry formation so this jal shakti this jal shakti ministry was formed by through merging merging ministry of water resources and ministry of drinking water and sanitation so this uh, this merger of these two ministries are are done to establish a unified approach for the conservation and management of river water and the rejuvenation and then we have the judicial intervention for example the famous case in uttar pradesh that is the mohammad salim versus state of uttarakhand in that case the high court of the uttarakhand declared the ganga and yamuna as living entities Uh, considering the ecological as well as the cultural importance of these two rivers but later the supreme court of india stayed this uh, judgment so in this topic we discussed the basic facts of river yamuna and how the major rivers in india are getting polluted and what are the measures taken by the government of india to ensure the sustainability of water bodies in india so uh, let, with this background let us try to answer the answer a mains practice question the question is rivers have been the cradle of civilizations nurturing human development yet modern civilizations have turned them into sites of severe pollution analyze so in the first part we have to write how the rivers 
acted as a cradle of civilization for example if you look all the ancient civilization from indus valley civilization or chinese civilization egyptian civilization or the mesopotamian civilization all these civilizations flourished only on the bank of rivers for example the mesopotamian civilization flourished in, on the bank of river utah river euphrates and tigris while uh, indus valley civilization flourished on bank of river and the chinese civilization flourished on bank of river yellow river and then the uh, Egyptian civilization flourished on the bank of Nile. So, considering all the ancient civilizations, we can see that all the civilization flourished on the bank of rivers only, because the water was uh, water is an essential need. Because the water is an essential need in uh, in every time. So, the question is: Rivers have been the cradle of civilizations, nurturing human development. Yet, modern civilizations have turned them turned them into sites of severe pollution analyze so this question is saying that this, uh, the rivers ha have been acting as a civil cradle for all civilizations yes that is true because if you consider all the ancient civilizations so try to answer this mains practice question and post it in the comment section we will review and replay for your answer now let us move to the next topic look at this newspaper article taken from the newspaper the hindu manipur as a case for imposing article 356 this article is talking about the importance of 356 in the context of Manipur because there is there is a resurgence of violence in the state in the recent times and a few days back we saw that the union government implemented AFPA that is Armed Forces Special Power Act in the six police station areas of the state considering the resurgence of the violence. So let us discuss more about the article 356 and its influence in the Indian polity from the UPSC mains, mains point of view. So what is it all about? It is talking about the president rule right. It empowers the president to impose president's rule if the state governance cannot be carried out as per the constitution. So this is the uh, this, this is the article 356 is all about and what will be the ground for the declaration of the president rule. For example, if the governor uh, reports the president citing that the, the governance of the state cannot be carried out as per the constitution or, or if the president is receiving certain uh, information regarding the constitutional failure of a state from other credible sources such as in, uh, such as in intelligence or if the president is satisfied that the state condition is deteriorating day by day then also they can impose the president rule so this this is a general ground for the uh, implementation of article 356 in the indian context so let us discuss what are those grounds the first major reason will be the breakdown of constitutional machinery of a state for example if a state fails to uphold the constitutional provisions for example the ruling party loses its majority what happens if a ruling party loses its majority usually the governor of the state will approach the opposition leader and he will ask the opposition leader can you form a new government and if the opposition leader can uh, form a new government or he can uh, after passing a confidence motion in the state legislature then he can uh, form a new government or otherwise if the opposition leader also fails to also fails to form a new government then definitely the uh, governor can uh, send this report to the president of india so next next is the failure of the law and order in a state for example if a state is going through a prolonged violence communal right or other internal disturbances the, for example the punjab issue of 1980s then also the state can attract the article 356 and the third major issue will be the failure to comply with the constitutional directions for example if a state is not implementing the laws of the parliament or they are not maintaining a maintaining a proper communication with the parliament then in certain cases that can also attract the article 356 and the next major reason will be the secessionist movements or threat to the unity of the state for example the naga insurgents or insurgencies of the late 1950s and 60s can uh, is a best example and if the state found that such movements are is affecting the sovereignty of the state then definitely it can attract the article 356 and then we have the uh, reason number five that is a widespread political instability for example inability to form a government in a state uh, the best example is the hung government so this can also attract article 356 for example the political crisis of goa and karnataka because in 2019 the the government of karnataka fell so in such in instances also uh, the state can attract article 356 so here we will have a question is the governor's report mandatory for implementing article 356 actually it is not the governor can send a report citing the constitution failure of a state but at the same time if the president is satisfied that the uh, that the state is going through uh, a stage of constitutional missionary failure then at the same time the president can go for article 356 or at the same time he is receiving uh, information from credible sources such as intelligence report saying that uh, there is a constitutional failure in the state then also he can implement article 356 and what will be the powers of the president under article 356 
So once Article 356 is imposed in a particular state, then the president can assume the functions of the state government. He can also declare the that the parliament can exercise the functions of the powers and functions of the state legislature. At the same time, he also has the authority to suspend or dissolve the state legislative assembly. But it is all not necessary all the time. Coming to the duration of the Article 356, how long this Article 356 can, can continue in a state? Usually, it is valid only for the six months, but it is extendable up to three years with the parliamentary approval for every six months. If every six months, there will be a review. And if the parliament is satisfied that the, the constitutional mechanism is still, you know, uh, in, a, in a failed situation, then the, uh, the Article 356 can be extended up to three years. But here we will have a question. What if there is a misuse of Article 356? Actually, this issue was addressed by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar himself saying that Article 356 is very important in protecting the sovereignty as well as the integrity of the nation. But at the same time, he also warned the future about the misuse of this Article 356. Because if you look into the uh, SR Bombay case, we can see that Article 356 plays a major role. But at the same time, it can be misused. Because India is a diverse nation. Therefore, the, the diverse nation means diverse problems will be also there. Therefore, protecting the integrity of the nation, we need an article, an instrument like Article 356. So, there comes the importance of Article 356, but it can be and it, 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 it is misused in certain instances in the history. There is no doubt in that. Coming to the significance of the Article 356, it prevents anarchy and ensures union intervention to restore the governance in a state. For example, uh, we know that certain areas in certain nations, the, the violence are continuing, the state of anarchy is continuing for even for decades. But in the case of India, it will not be happening that much easily because of the Article 356. And at the same time, if there is any such issue, then the Article 356 is empowering the union government to intervene in such issues and restore the, the smooth governance in that state. Now, we are going to see certain judicial interventions regarding the Article 356. The, the case just I mentioned that is SR Bombay versus Union of India 1994. So, this landmark case uh, restricted the misuse of the Article 356. This landmark case is talking about the misuse of Article 356 in the, uh, in the state of Bihar. What are the key uh, aspects we have to understand from the SR Bombay case? First one is the court declared that the Article 356 is subject to judicial review because there is a statement I said before that if the president is satisfied that the, the, the there is a failure in the constitutional mechanism in a state that satisfaction can be judicially reviewed and the second is the requires parliamentary approval within two months for the continuation of the article 356 in a uh, in a state and then we have the legislative majority must be tested before invocation. This is done to ensure that the Article 356 is not misused and it is done to ensure a just restoration of the harmony in a state. So, that is the purpose of testing uh, the legislative majority before the implementation of Article 356. And the next case is Rameshwar Prasad versus Union of India 2005. In this case, the court declared that the dissolution of Bihar Assembly in 2000. Uh, 5 is unconstitutional. Therefore, while implementing the Article 356, the union government has to adhere to the constitutional principles. So, these are the two major uh, cases related to Article 356 and this can be asked in the UPSC 2025 mains question because of the ongoing uh, Manipur issue. So, please note these cases and it will be useful. And just like I mentioned, how it is relevant, Article 356 is relevant in Mani Manipur issue. And we know that the Manipur issue is, is still continuing and it has been over one year. So, therefore, Article 356, the declaration of Article 366 will be, uh, will be useful in restoring the peace and order in the state at the same time to restore the constitutional mechanism in the state. Now, we are going to see the consequences of imposing President's rule in a state. The first is for the state government, how it will affect the state government. Uh, dissolution or suspension of the state legislatures and the powers of the state legislatures will be transmitted to the will be transferred to parliament. So, this is always not necessary in certain cases the, the dissolution or suspension of the state legislature may not happen and second is the dismissal of the chief ministers and the council of ministers in the state this is also not necessary in all scenarios and coming to the role of the central government how the central government's role will be changing once the article 356 is important uh, the direct rule the central will rule the state through governor 
and the parliament of india will assume the legislative powers of the state government but at the same time it can affect the center state relations and the federal structure of india because of the potential abuse of article 356 for political gain and this will disrupt the cooperative federalism principle of indian federalism and then we have the impact on governance the article 356 is aiming to restore the the stability in a state but at the same time the the certain incidents during the time of article 356 may erode the the people's trust on the democratic institutions or the frequent imposition of article 356 in the state can also affect the trust of the people from that state so these are the uh, major impact of the or the consequences of imposition of the article 356 in a state so in this topic we discussed the article 356 its provisions and how it is changing the indian polity and how it is changing the central state relations once once it is imposed so try to answer this mains practice question based on the discussion critically analyze the constitutional and federal implications of imposing article 356 in the context of manipur crisis so this the question is simply asking once the how the how the relation between Uh, the manipur and the union government will be changed once there is article 356 is imposed in the state and what will be the other changes will be taking place in the state so this question has only one part try to answer this question and post it in the comment section we will review and reply for your answer with this we are coming to the conclusion for this video if you like the video hit the like button and also give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive on time update thank you have a nice day